What's up guys, Jordan here with Objective-C Tutorials Lesson 1, What You Need to Program and Programming Basics. Now, yes, this is a remake video of Lesson 1, and why I'm remaking it is because the audio is just way too low in the original Lesson 1, and uh, there's a couple things that I just wanted to correct, a few minor mistakes. But anyways, what we'll be going over in this lesson is what you need to program, the uh, basics of how programs work, and some specifics about Objective-C. But before I jump into the lesson, let me just tell you guys that it doesn't matter if you don't have any programming experience ever. Um, you can come in these lessons without having typed a single line of code ever before in your life and you'll be fine because I teach these lessons in such a way that it is extremely simple and easy to understand, but yet the lessons are extremely thorough at the same time and I teach them without assuming any prior programming uh, knowledge or experience. But anyways, uh, let's just get into the lesson. So what you need to program. Now, there's actually a few different programs that you need to make a program. Uh, the first being a source code editor. You need a program that allows you to add code and edit the code of your program. Uh, then you need a compiler to actually build and compile all the code of your program and actually make it into a usable program. Then you need a program to design the interface. And the interface is what you actually see when you use a program. Um, it's what the user actually sees and interacts with. Uh, you don't see the code of a program when you're using a program. Uh, you just see the interface. So you need a program to design the interface. And then you need uh, debuggers. And these are programs that uh, find errors and problems with your program and help you fix them. Now, uh, Xcode. This is the source code editor, and it's also the compiler. So it's actually two programs all wrapped into one. Um, as you can see, there's a screen clipping of Xcode on the right there. You can see different code inside of Xcode. And then if you hit run up at the top of Xcode, uh, it will actually compile and run your program. And then on the left-hand side of the slide there, you can see uh, the Xcode icon. Now the next program is Interface Builder, and Interface Builder obviously helps you create the interface of your program, and uh, it lets you connect it up with the code. So you would add a button in your program using Interface Builder, and then you would connect up that button to uh, whatever piece of code that will be run when you press the button. And uh, Interface Builder is now actually built into Xcode. So uh, in previous versions of Xcode, uh, Xcode 3 and back, uh, Interface Builder was a separate program, and that's the icon for Interface Builder over there on the left-hand side. But from Xcode 4 uh, to current versions, it's actually built in to Xcode. There's not uh, two different programs. And then we have Instruments, and this is a really, really powerful debugger. When you first open it up, there's a list of there's a list of different tasks that you can run, um, such as uh, you can see how much memory your program is using. Uh, it helps you find leaks of your it leaks in your program, and it also records program performance. And it's just a really, really powerful uh, debugger. There's also a debugger that's built into Xcode for simple uh, errors and debugging your program along the way. But really, once you've built your program, you'll want to use uh, instruments to really refine it and get out any memory leaks and uh, different things along those lines. Now you may be saying, well, where do I get Xcode? Well, first off, let me just tell you guys that you can only use Xcode on a Mac. You cannot use Xcode on a Windows computer. Now that being said, you can get Xcode a few different places. Uh, the first place is you can get it from the Snow Leopard disk. So if you have that installed DVD, um, you can go ahead and pop that into your Mac and you can actually install Xcode from the Snow Leopard install disk. But uh, the version of Xcode is actually a previous version. It isn't the latest version of Xcode. So if you want to get the latest version of Xcode, which is Xcode 4, you need to download that from the Mac App Store. And you can see that it uh, sells for $4.99. Now, 
You can also get Xcode from the Apple Development Center. So if you go to developer.apple.com slash program slash register, you can actually register as an Apple developer for free and you can get Xcode 3. And this isn't the latest version of Xcode, but it still works fine. You also get a lot of other uh, developer resources and different things. And this is the best thing to do if you don't want to pay any money and you don't have Snow Leopard or Lion because you need uh, Snow Leopard or Lion uh, to get the Mac App Store and obviously you also need a Snow Leopard install DVD if you want to get it from that. So if you have uh, just Leopard or a previous version of Mac OS X, uh, this is the best way to go if you don't want to spend any money. But if you don't mind spending some money, you can actually join a uh, Apple developer program. So if you go to developer.apple.com slash programs, you can actually join the iOS developer program or the Mac uh, developer program. And with these programs, you get uh, Xcode 4, which is the latest version of Xcode. You get a lot more developer resources than the free membership. Um, you also get pre-release versions of uh, the operating system. So for iOS and the Mac, uh, whichever one you choose, you get pre-released versions of the operating system quite a few months before anybody else does. Um, and you'll also need to join one of these programs when you want to put your app on either one of the Apple app stores. So if you have an app that you're ready to release to the public, uh, you'll join one of these programs to uh, upload it to the App Store. But I wouldn't recommend joining one of these programs now because it is $99 a year and there's really no need to if you're just getting into programming. So the best bet would probably be to uh, just get it from the Mac App Store if you have Snow Leopard or Lion, but if you have Leopard or a previous version of Mac OS X, just register as an Apple developer for free. Now, real quickly, I'm going to be running through the life of a program. Now, it starts off in code in the uh, source code editor. So you type in all the different code for your program, then you click run, and then it goes to the compiler and is actually compiled and built. And then it is start stored on your hard drive, whether this is the hard drive of your computer or a mobile device. And then once you actually uh, open up that program it is actually launched and you can see it running on screen you actually interact and use it now you may be saying well what is objective c well objective c is the programming language used by apple and it's what you will be learning and what i will be teaching you in my lessons obviously since they are objective c tutorials now you may be saying well why the name well because it is a superset of C, the programming language C, and Objective C is an object oriented language. So mash all that together and you get Objective C. Now you may be saying, well, what is object oriented programming? Well, there's two main types of programming procedural programming and then object oriented programming. And the best way for me to explain these two types of programming and how they differ from each other in a way that someone who has never been around programming before can very easily understand is in the following way. Now let's say we're going to make a program that makes a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. With procedural programming, it's just like a huge giant list of instructions. So you'd have an instruction to get out the plate, get out the knife, get out the bread, um, peanut butter, jelly, then open up the bread, take out two slices, put it on the plate, then open up the two containers, um, then stick the knife in the peanut butter, spread it on the bread, then stick the knife in uh, the jar of jelly, spread that on the other slice of bread, then put the two slices of bread together and put it back on the plate. So as you can see, it's just a giant list of instructions. Now with object oriented programming, it's not so much a giant list of instructions that you're making. It's more that you're making uh, these objects, which are kind of like tools, I guess you could say. So you get, um, you would make one object so that it could get out all the utensils and uh, everything that's needed to make the uh, peanut butter and jelly sandwich. So you'd get out the knife and the plate. And then you'd also have another object that could get out all the different ingredients. So one that can get out the bread and the jelly and peanut butter. Then you'd uh, have an object that could 
open all of the ingredients up. So uh, open up the jars of peanut butter and jelly and then uh, uh, take off the twisty and open up the bread bag. Then you would also need one obviously that can actually make the sandwich. So it can uh, take out the bread and it can um, spread the peanut butter and the jelly and put it together and lay it back down on the plate. Now, um, let's say we wanted to extend our program because this is really where the difference between procedural programming and object-oriented programming uh, comes into play. Let's say we want to extend our program so that uh, we can also make uh, five different types of subs. So, um, if we wanted to do it with procedural programming, we'd actually have to go through the list and just make a whole other list for each type of sub, even if it's just slightly different. Um, so as you can see, that would take a lot of time and would be very uh, confusing. And you also have the chance for error when you're retyping kind of the same thing over and over. But with object-oriented programming, we already have these objects that kind of function, like I said, as like a tool uh, that they're able to get out the ingredients or get out the utensils. So if you needed a serrated knife, for example, to cut the sub roll, you could, that same object that can get out uh, a regular knife for spreading uh, the peanut butter can also get out uh, a serrated knife. And the object that can get out uh, bread can also get out um, ham and provolone cheese. So as you can see, you add um, functionality and then you just kind of have to specify what that functionality is going to do. And um, also another big thing with the difference between object-oriented programming and procedural programming is that with um, errors, with procedural programming, it's like that giant list and everything's very uh, closely related and when you mess up with one thing, so when you have an error, can easily uh, mess up other parts of your program that actually work fine and it's hard to locate the error and it's just uh, harder to deal with. But with object-oriented programming, everything is split up enough in these objects that when you have an error, you can easily switch um, that object out with another object that works fine or you can simply just fix that error within that one object. Um, you can also, with object-oriented programming, uh, you just get a whole lot more features and power that you just can't find with procedural programming. And also, when you're implementing new features, you can implement them without having to worry about uh, messing up a part of your program that currently works fine because everything is with within these objects and it's just a whole lot simpler and easier to do. So if I wanted to oversimplify it for you guys. Um, the difference, or what really makes object-oriented programming better would be that it's easier to find errors and fix them, and it's easier to extend and enhance your program. So within one sense, that's really what separates object-oriented programming from procedural programming. But um, that was just uh, a very good overview of the difference between procedural programming and object-oriented programming in uh, basic terms that someone that has never been around programming ever before can really truly understand and grasp uh, the concept behind these two ways of programming. But of course, I'll get into much more specifics about object-oriented programming and how it differs from procedural programming um, as you uh, go through and watch my uh, lessons. But that's it for this lesson, guys. And now what you need to do is go to either the Mac App Store, the Snow Leopard Disk, or the Apple Development Center and download and install Xcode. Because starting in the next lesson, you'll actually be building and running your very own newly created program that I'll actually show you how to make. So you definitely need to go ahead and download Xcode from whichever of these three resources, which is best for you. But guys, thanks for checking out this video and be sure to leave any comments and questions that you may have down below. Also, be sure to subscribe up above to be notified notified when I upload new objective -C tutorials. Also be sure to like and favorite this video if it helps you out. That is always greatly appreciated. But hopefully I'll see you in many more of my Objective-C tutorials down the road.